was born in Colombia, I grew up there all my life until I was 17, until I graduated high school. My sister and I went to a bilingual school, which clearly, considering I ended up here, that made a huge difference. So that school had a really strong science and math program. Then actually I lived in Germany as an exchange student for a year before college. And the real reason I did that is because in Colombia, we don't have that option of like being undeclared. So like when you arrive in college, you need to already be enrolled in a major. And so I didn't know what I wanted to study. So I kind of needed a gap year. It was like a few weeks before I actually left on that gap year. My mom learned that biomedical engineering existed. We didn't know that there was an engineering degree where you could both do biological, medical sciences and engineering. And so I became really interested in that. While I was in Germany, we started doing a little bit more research on where I could study biomedical engineering. It turns out that at the time, there were only maybe two programs in the entire country in Colombia that were open for biomedical engineering. And those programs concentrated more on like electrical engineering type things, like more on devices. And I was more interested in the basic biology part. That's the primary reason I moved to the United States. So I came here because this is where biomedical engineering really started officially as a discipline. Originally, I moved to the University of Texas, which was also very nice because if I went from Colombia to Germany and that was a huge culture shock. And then I moved to Texas and in comparison, Texas and Colombia were very similar. Like we have a lot of people from Mexico and from other Latin American countries in Texas. So that was a really easy transition for me. So I went to undergraduate school there. Then there I got involved in research. So then I was like, oh, I really like to do research. And I also got my first job was I was a tutor at the learning center. And that's where I also was like, oh, I really love to teach. I want to be a professor. And so to be a professor in the U.S., really, you need a Ph.D. And so that's why I went to graduate school. Then I moved to the University of Wisconsin. And super cold, pretty big cultural differences between Texas and Wisconsin. But I loved it there, had a great time, had a fantastic mentor, great lab. And I continued doing research and like working towards this goal of being a professor. I really identify with being a teacher. That's probably what I like the most about being a professor. When I was a postdoctoral researcher at Cornell University, they often would just call us scholars, like not even students or postdocs. They would be like, y'all are scholars. So it felt very medieval ages and like the Renaissance ages. But that's honestly how I feel like that is probably the best word I could use to describe myself because that describes somebody who's interested in learning and in teaching and in asking questions and in being curious about the world. So microbes are like more are closer to us than we think. And so that was my thinking in when I started crocheting. It's like, okay, I want to draw attention to the fact that these microorganisms are incredibly important to our health, to our planet. And so what better way to do it than to make them super cute and colorful so that people actually learn more about them. I now see myself as kind of a combination of a bunch of different things. I'm a scientist, I'm a, but I'm also an engineer. I'm an artist. And a lot of the things that we do in art um, bleed into our work. I have a couple of examples here. So this is what they look like. They're more cute than what a microbe is like in real life. Like in real life, for example, uh, they're not gonna have eyes. Bacteria don't really have eyes, nor do viruses or fungi. But yeah, the reason why I make them so cute is a little bit of purpose to draw attention and to subvert this idea that all microbes are bad for us. When I went to Germany, I did not speak German. I have a tendency to do that. I was hired on this microbiome project as a postdoc. I didn't really know anything about microbes. So I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Why did I say yes? But I think that attitude of saying yes to opportunities, even when they are a little bit scary, can take you pretty far. And sometimes I think, you know what? If I could do that, <laughs> you know, if I could go to Germany when I was only 17, and not speak German and like really miss my family and it ended up being okay. If I could do that, I can do like almost anything.